What's going on again, folks? Welcome back to the Bearded Wisdom Podcast. I am your host, Les McDaniel, and I am excited to dive de- dive deep into the world of peace. And I know that you're like, dive deep into the world of peace. Man, I got to tell you that it is a foundational truth that peace resides at the core of your very essence. It's not something out there. It is something at the core of who you are. But before we go there, I want you to know this show is for the is to inspire the uninspired, to unstick what is stuck, and to liberate that leader within you. But before we unlock those deep mysteries of that liberated leader within you, I want to remind you that you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at epicfusion.life. That's epicfusion.life. And then you can also find me on TikTok and YouTube at uh, the bearded, not the bearded wisdom, bearded wisdom, bearded wisdom. That's where you can find me on TikTok and YouTube, bearded wisdom. Go take a look. I can assure you we're dripping lots of wisdom here and there all over throughout the day to make sure that you are connected, that you are beginning to shape your life, to lead yourself, to know yourself so that you can do so even more impactfully in our world today. This week, we are continuing our conversation around the Peace Index. And if you haven't already started that process, go back last week and listen to those because they are critical pieces of where we are going moving forward. So the Peace Index and conquering the chaos and and finding fulfillment is where we are at and what we're moving forward in today. So without further ado, let's kind of jump in and see where this takes us. Now, First and foremost, the thing that I really want you to understand about kind of where this whole process has gone is you've already taken the peace index. Uh, that is assuming that you've gone back and listened to all of these coming up to up to this particular podcast. And you've recognized in that that there is uh, something that needs to change. You might be like, okay, now that I've got this number, now what do I do? Where do I really go from here in terms of how do I connect the dots on what is really going on, where I need to change some things, where I ha- what, do, what do I do? And so really what we're talking about today is your peace plan. As we work on this peace plan, what you got to recognize about this is that there are two sides, just like in most things in life. There's an offense and a defensive side. The offensive side is truly all about being intentional and and taking initiative in working on those places in your life where your peace levels may be lower than you would like. And to really begin to identify those, to dive deep and to create some patterns of behavior that can ultimately shift you down that path line, pathway into a more peaceful life. The second part of this is the defensive side. And the defensive side is really all about you beginning to, well, create boundaries for yourself, to not put walls up, not to do things that are unhealthy for yourself, but to begin to allow yourself the space to create some boundaries with those that may be intruding on your peace or to recognize patterns of behavior when you re- really start to get busy in life and you and you start neglecting the offensive side of things that allows you that space to understand where you are on your peace index and to move forward more succinctly. So it's all about just the rules and, the, and kind of the ways that m- maybe it's the, uh, the systems through which you, you're able to go through and you track your peace index once a week so that you're making sure that you keep those boundaries in place. That's kind of where we're going at this particular juncture when it comes to creating a peace plan for you. Now, speaking of peace plan, I'm getting an Amber Alert on my watch right now, and it's it's just I I find myself already distracted, but we're going to keep going. So here's the deal. After you took that final peace plan at the end of last chapter, what what I want you to be able to do is really begin to kind of dive back in and to create maybe an action plan of one or two things that you're really wanting to do. The goal is, is to get to the number that you desire, 100 being the highest possible that you can on your peace index. Now, will we achieve the 100x model or the 100% health? I mean, that that's yet to be determined. I don't know anybody who's reached the 100% health, but man, I do love the idea of being able to increase that into the top quarter of of that 100% and above 75% ideally upwards of 90%. I I think that's where we begin to find ourselves clicking in life. So after you took the assessment before and you've kind of gone through and taken a deep dive into each of the categories, helping you really discover even further what that looks like, what I really want you to begin to do is to just notice those areas within the purpose, the people, the place, or the personal health and the provision 
did your peace index go up as you go through that now? Did it, did it go up like it did for me as I began to understand that provision was really not about the things that I want, but more about the things that, that are necessary in our life, the, the baseline level needs and the things that I could let go of that don't really provide me with any peace. Or it could be the people in my life, an, a recognition that there are times in life where I've got to call people up in my life if I really want them to be a part of that peaceful process, or I've got to begin to call myself out of that, call myself up and out of those relationships in order to find myself among healthier type, healthier people in, in this world. So I really want you to be aware too, uh, as you're going through this. And I think I may have mentioned this in, in uh, the previous podcast, but each of us has a driver. For me, my driver is purpose that leading indicator of my life, that thing that when it is out of whack just feels like like, a, like everything else, there's nothing else that really matters too much. It, it it's, it's the thing that makes me even say things. I mean, I've heard myself say this to my wife before. I'm just so unhappy with the way things are. Such a broad sweeping category around what, what, is real, what I'm really saying is in those moments, oftentimes is that my leading indicator of purpose feels really off and there's just not a whole lot that... I can find that is good when that one thing is really off. Now, it's not the sky is falling, but it does create a tension there. So with purpose as my driver, when it is high, I feel like almost like my place could be out of whack. I mean, so many things can be out of whack when that purpose is high, but when it's low, man, it's a challenge. And so I, I really want us to begin to find ways to reconnect with your leading indicator to understand how you got where you are, what maybe is off in that, and see what the, what the things that are in our control that we can take instant action on today. So I will start off by letting you know that I remember when, when I was in the midst of doing a very, very, um, had a business in real estate, um, did commercial real estate for several years. And was really successful at it, had a, a great business partner, a great team. All of it was just beautiful, except I just wasn't at peace. And I wasn't at peace for lots of different reasons, but the primary one was that my purpose was out of whack. I had fallen into a place where I was being driven to sell products and services that just really weren't in my wheelhouse. They weren't relational in the truest sense of the word. They Buying and selling real estate is an important part of life. I owned, I have owned many, uh, many homes. I've flipped houses. I've done investment properties all throughout my life. And, and I've loved it and I've enjoyed that part of it, but it didn't really have the key components of really watching people have those aha moments, those transformative moments where they, they come into themselves and they, they feel good in their own skin I love to be part of that transformation in people. And real estate just wasn't doing it for me. Occasionally, I would have these conversations, but it was like I wanted my life to be, a, be about calling people up in this world and to some, in, into higher levels of what it means to be human, to be good, to be successful, to be at peace, to live in a place that is less chaotic and, and where there's not all the demands on our attention in this world. So I, I, I love that... that there was a moment in time when I finally came to this conclusion. And it was, it was after Heatherly's uh, stroke that I realized I was really just wasting a lot of time doing things that were not meaningful and, and not really in my wheelhouse. And it caused me to, to struggle with even how I showed up for her during that particular time and showed up for my kids at that particular time in my life. And so I committed in those moments around 2017 to really begin to engage back into things that gave me great purpose. And so that's what I'm challenging you to do today. So having gone through now and reassessed yourself, what did you find out about yourself? Did you find that you have risen to the occasion? Did you, are you finding that maybe it's time like I did in those moments when I was in commercial real estate where I need to fire myself, truly fired myself from the job and took the commitments and the steps necessary that I could control to move forward and really, well, doing what I'm doing right now, talking to you about ways in which you can find peace, transforming yourself, finding ways to liberate that leader within, side of it, within you. So it's in those moments that you might find yourself tapping into uh, that, that leading indicator for your life and beginning to 
call yourself, your own self up, and then to begin to discover those areas where you might be low in other areas. And it could be that it's in your leading indicator. It could be that it was in one of the other spots. And it's really all about how can we begin to take actions that within the things that we can control to move ourselves out of the fear that we feel from not being at peace, out of the fear we feel from the things that might be scary. Uh, I mean, I can tell you that my purpose was really driven a lot by the people and the way I got to work with people. Well, those people in my life at one point, well, they just kind of, it, it's just things didn't pan out. And that the, a lot of people in my life changed and shifted. And, and that community, the communities that I was a part of had shifted into an entirely different realm. And that also had an impact on my purpose, to be very clear. It had a strong impact on that. So being able to know and recognize where those low spots are allows me to go in and get into the fine tuning of what do I need to do in these areas of my people, my purpose, my place, physical health, or sorry, personal health or provision. I think that's where we got to get started. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to list the areas, the purpose, people, place, personal health, provision, that are the lowest percent that currently need the most improvement. I want you to make a list of everything that is going on. So this is going to require you to get your journal out and don't skip these steps. I mean, we we tend to pay attention to these things. They show up and that for brief moments, we might give them a little of attention, but we're very quick to put them aside. But so journaling these things is really going to be a key in helping you discover what it is that you can track in your life to be able to see where this where, where the piece may be off. So after you make that list of everything that is going right in each of that, that, those categories, it's important now to go in and make a list of the things that are not going so well in that category. So list the area, purpose, people, place, personal health, provision, and that, that have the lowest. And then start with the things that are going right in that category. Tap into that gratitude. Tap into that thing that's, that is, uh, allows you to, to realize that the sky truly isn't falling. Get that down. And now make a list of everything that, is going well, uh, that isn't going well in that category. The things that, you are, that are obvious. Those things that, that you're, the imposter is screaming at you. Man, you don't know what you're doing. Blank. Here's what you are doing that is not working blank. Here's why you, you know the, you know the voice. Yeah, I don't have to share it with you. That voice. And then the fourth thing is what is missing or needs to be improved upon specifically in order for this to increase? And is it in your control? Now, make a list of what is confusing, what doesn't make sense about that particular thing in your life. And that's a really challenging thing to be to begin to really understand because a lot of the a lot of time there's some little simple thing that needs to be adjusted in order for us to be able to capture the essence of of what was really going on. You know, I I am one of those people. Uh, my wife and I both are highly sensitive people. What does that mean? Well, it means that when I get a shirt, uh, I I have to cut the tags out, and the reason why is is because I can be having a great day, and when I put on a shirt or I'm going out to play golf or whatever it might be, if I have something that is rubbing on my neck the wrong way, it absolutely can ruin my day. Um, I have to take, I'm, this is really funny. I'm, I'm stumbling on my words because I can't believe I'm about to show this, but I'm going to. But when I go get my hair cut, I have to have a shirt there with me and I have to have something to be able to like dust off all the hairs that get well, being bearded guy, those little hairs after they do the trims go in the shirt and man, they are so irritating. And I think that's the key component of what we're really talking about here is you being able to recognize those tags that you have in your life that create all sorts of unrest. It's usually not some really big thing, but we don't know that until we get into the nitty gritty and we start to ask this, the questions around what are we confused about? And so getting the results that you want from this is really going to be all about you being willing to dive deep into those five questions and really beginning to get into the nitty gritty of the things that are controllables for you that allow you to grow beyond that. And so I, I think the other alternative here that I really want to talk about is what is the other side of not choosing to spend your time in this piece and going in down this road of, of diving deep into to what's really going on within you? What happens if you can't 
really truly make any changes. I think that number one, that's a dangerous place to begin to think that there is you're not you're out of control, and that there there might need to be something really that that can happen in your life that can bring about some of that peace. You might need to get help. I mean, we all we all just went through this crazy time in 2020, 2021, where we were all locked in our homes, locked away is what I mean, forced forced to stay home. And that feeling that that comes from the things that are out of our control are really, really challenging. And man, many of us are still are still struggling to figure out how to find a quote unquote new norm. And and I can tell you that one of the key components of this is all about how you can begin to reach into each of the other pockets of this and be intentional around how you lead yourself to to really dive in and find out that it's not that we had to stay home that was really the problem. What the real problem was, it was our inability to understand how to be self-aware enough to know what we actually needed in those moments. And so taking the time to dive into this, maybe even getting some help from uh, a health professional, if need be, to really continue to raise yourself up, to encourage yourself up into that space where you are able to find peace, that's the thing that you can control. You can't control the external chaos, but you can control what goes on inside of you by simply beginning to create self-awareness around it and find new ways to call yourself up out of those moments of despair and into something that is beautiful and moving you forward in this life. So that said, I I really hope that you can uh, begin to create that peace plan, that you can write down, dig in with, with those spots, create those categories for purpose, people, place, personal health, and provision. And, and really begin to capture the essence of those little nitty gritty details that, that you can feel that, 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 uh, that pee under the mattress, the princess's mattress that is piled up. And it's that one little pee that is creating that discomfort within us. It's the tags in our shirts that we just, there's some of the things we, we just have to cut out. Sometimes we have to change a few of the things that distract us from really being willing to spend time. Nightly routines is one of the key components for me that really does rock my world when I don't stay consistent to it. Morning routines, they fall on the heels of the, that, that evening routine. If my evening routine goes well and I get up and I start my morning right, I begin to find that that, that allows me the time to spend that I need to spend in really discovering that piece index more fully. So that said, we're going to be moving into the next, uh, which you can be looking forward to towards tomorrow is really us diving into what it looks like to, well, maintain that piece. Like, can you, can we sustain this? Could it be sustainable for a year? Could it be sustainable for a month for some of us? But we want to begin to see some wins around that. And so that's where we're going to begin to start moving in this next session around keeping that piece for some time inside of you, as well as maybe even keeping the peace around in your world for those who come into it. That said, look forward to speaking to you later on. And for now, be at peace, stay at peace, and peace rest upon you. That's a lot of peace. We need more. Talk to you soon.